Welcome to the Quad, the new board game geek show where four scandalous characters from around the world of hobby board gaming meet to discuss game-related topics. Each one of us will argue, defend, or fight to have our chosen example be shown to be the best example in a given topic for this week's show. I'm Stephen Bonacore, the pod father of gaming, hobby game entrepreneur, game media personality, and game industry veteran. You can find me all over social media, especially Facebook and YouTube, as the pod father of gaming, plus my very long-running podcast, Board Games Insider. And I am Candace Harris, media creator for Board Game Geek. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Candy Drum, that's candy with an I, and just all over Board Game Geek doing podcast stuff, cardboard creations, interviewing designers, writing news articles and such, and just playing a lot of board games. Awesome. My name is Matthew McCack. I am the co-runner of Room 51. You can find us on YouTube YouTube as Room 51. We also stream board games on twitch.tv slash Room 51 Live. You can also follow all of our social media on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at This Is Room 51. Hello. I'm Danny Standring, and I feel like your intros were super cool. Uh, um, I'm a short form <laughs> content creator. Uh, you can find me on all of the platforms with all of the search bars at Danny underscore Standring for all of your silly board game needs, lifestyle stuff, all that jazz. Um, that's that's it. Thank you, everybody. Today, the topic of the show that we are going to discuss. Drum roll, please, Derek. Games of noted designer, Vlada Shvatel. And we're going to tell you why our example of these games is the best in the genre and what, or what makes it special in this category, the great games of the great designer, Vlada Shvatel. Let me introduce, well, who is Vlada to the audience in case you just don't know him. I doubt it that's the case, but why not? Vlada Shvatel is a Czech game designer whose games are often on the border between thematic and euros. He is known for his unique style of rulebook writing that is both praised and criticized by different people. I'm getting this from Board Game Geek, by the way. I wouldn't say that. The rulebooks are often divided into several <laughs> learning scenarios, each adding some more rules until reaching the full game. The rulebooks are often use humor as a method of explanation. But moreover, quite a prolific designer with over 80 entries on Board Game Geek and four games in the top 120 games on BGG, Vlada Shvatel is undoubtedly one of the greatest board game designers in the world today. So why don't we get right into it, present our games. Matthew, why don't you begin by giving us your best Vlada Shvatel game? Yeah, so I love a lot of this person's uh, games, but my favorite by far is Mage Knight. Mage Knight is such a cool game. So it was published, I'm specifically talking about the Ultimate Edition. Uh, that's the one that I have. And so that's published by WizKids. And I think they did an awesome job. It includes uh, the three expansions as well as the base game itself. And essentially you are a Mage Knight going around, uh, exploring the land and trying to complete some sort of objective. Maybe it's conquering a city. Maybe it's going up against this uh, enemy that's coming after you but there's a lot of exploration there's deck building involved and those are two things that i love in board games deck building is probably my favorite mechanism in board gaming and then exploring and uh you could gain or lose reputation through the game and, and it really feels sort of like an rpg or a role-playing style game uh as you're going through it and it's tough i will say i have only played this solo and probably would only play it solo maybe cooperatively with one other person, but I like playing it solo because it's so puzzly and I love that. I love the puzzly nature to the game. Uh, and I like to just take my time to think about it and think what do I wanna do, how I could best uh, play the cards in the way that I need to. Uh, and there is mitigation because sometimes it's like, um, I didn't get the move card that I needed, but I could use this other card as a sideways, uh, I guess, I don't know, exhausted. And instead of using that uh, actual special ability, I get to move or, or whatever it might be. Maybe it's an attack. You could gain armies and everything. You can build up your army and your strength. It's so cool. And you're leveling up 
I love this game to pieces. I think that this is an absolute masterpiece uh, by Vlada Shvatil. Or how, how does he pronounce his name? I believe Vlada. it is Vlada Shvatil. Shvatil. But Vlada Shvatil. Uh, Czech is not my second language, so I, I do not really know. But that's my best guess. Vlada Shvatil. Yes. I love a game. And it's the best. And I mean, I think, I, I think Mage Knight is great. Um, I have only played it once solo and I have the ultimate edition also, and I really enjoyed it, but I think like a challenge for me with mage Knight is I've only played it once. Cause it's so hard to get to the table. You have to like invest so much time and energy, like relearning the rules every time you want to play it, unless you're able to just have all the free time in the world and just play it all the time. So, you know, while I think it's uh a an amazing game uh i think there are some other better games by vlada so i'm gonna so i'm, I'm gonna take it a shot here if that's okay and uh okay. while i i have not played mage knight however i have played star trek frontiers right which is a re-implementation that's the way board game geek talks about it right so it's and people have said it's like well it's a lighter version of Mage Knight. And I was, I played this and I was like, this is the lighter version? I'm like, what is going on with it? This, <laughs> the game is so much going on. And I played it with four players. So playing oh. it solo or with less players might change this, but it just, it did not work for me. Now I'm not talking about the, Matthew, I'm not talking about Mage Knight, but I'm talking about a game that is, has the mechanics, I guess, right, of Mage Knight. And it didn't, it didn't work for me. And I love Star Trek. And I was just like, there's just too much here. And it took over four hours to play it. And I'm like, this does not pay off in the in that amount of time. Sorry, Matthew. Yeah. I have not played Frontiers, so I I, I can't speak to that. Um, and therefore your argument is invalid. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Burn. So Burn. So yes, Danielle. I think I'm gonna sit somewhere in between both of you because I love a good chunky game like give me all the rules like give me like i need to sit down and like think things through like i'm okay with that but i do have to agree with you candace sometimes i don't want to spend the whole game just like hold on let me just go back to what i was looking at again and if i have to spend like a couple of like games to do that it kind of you know leaves a little sour taste in my mouth but that isn't to say i don't want to sit down with a behemoth of a game and work through it so I feel like Mage Knight is one of those, like, maybe I just need to play it again and, like, get through it and give it its due diligence. But who knows? I might be disappointed at the end of the day. But I don't, I, well, I don't know. I, I, sit, I sit very much on the fence with this one. Fence sitter. Yeah, fence. I think you'll like it. I, stay, I, I think I will you will stay like on it. That fence. It's definitely worth yeah. the investment. It is a solid game. I just think the game I chose... Uh, is a couple of clicks better so agreed no no no, no. Agreed. this is this is his masterpiece um and yes it is a heavier game uh i'm seeing on board game geek it's rated a 4.35 in weight out of five which is pretty heavy um <laughs> it's labeled in orange and everything but for those <laughs> who are willing to take on that type of challenge you will love this game. I think solo gamers in particular love this game uh, if, if they like mm -hmm. meteor games. So this one hits all the marks for me. And I find a lot, once you learn the rules, I find a lot of it to be sort of intuitive as you're going along. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Well, let's go from like his probably biggest, heaviest game to maybe his lightest of his very, certainly of his known games. And that is Code Names. Codenames, mm. originally published in 2015 by Czech Games Edition, um, designed, of course, by Vlada Shvatel, uh, and it was published in over 40 other languages as well by 40 other co-publishers. The mechanics are communication limits, memory, pusher luck, and a team-based game. Two to eight players, 15 minutes. The box says age is 14 plus, but that's ridiculous. You can play it with children as well, at least eight, 10 years old, without a doubt. So what is Codenames? It's a party game where you're basically solving a puzzle. 
The game divides the players into two teams of spies, red team versus blue team, and each team has a team leader, the Spy Master. Spy Master's goal is to lead their team to final victory. At the beginning of the game, there are 25 cards placed in a five by five grid on the center of the table. And each card has a different word printed on it. Each card is, has a corresponding position within that five by five grid. And those positions are associated with either the red team's color, the blue team's color, a neutral color, or the assassin. We'll get back to the assassin in a moment. Only the two spy masters know which of the 25 cards is associated with the two team's colors, the neutral color, or the assassin. The spy masters then in turn provide one word clues to the respective teams and guide them along uh, by also providing a number with one word clue and the number. And for instance, it's blue team, the blue team would go and they might say animal two. So I'm giving that clue to my team. And maybe I'm trying to get them to point to the elephant and pet words that are on the table, which I know because I'm the spy master, those are blue and I want them. But maybe there's a word like zoo also on the table and that belongs to the red team. So that might not be a great clue to try to get them to pick elephant and pet. And worse, I mentioned the assassin. If the assassin word is ever chosen by either team, the team immediately loses. So you must do everything to guide your team away from that word. If any of the neutral words are chosen by any team, there's no penalty other than the turn immediately goes to the other team. This is the quintessential party game. It is the best party game in the world, though BGG has it ranked in only three in party games, which they don't know anything. But it really sets, set a new standard in party games when it came out. Um, because now all of a sudden party games could be really thinky, really clever, and just creating those aha moments that make game night so great, so memorable, so much fun. Um, you can play this game with children, non-gamer friends, grandma and grandpa, hobby gamers. Everybody loves this game. Completely versatile, and it basically scales to any reasonable number of players. I've been quoted on many podcasts saying every family in America should take all that stack of monopolies that they have in their closet that they collected over the years, throw them out, and place code names there instead on the shelf, and they'll get so much more gameplay and enjoyment out of code names. Your Honor, the defense rests. <laughs> that was great. That was oh. great, Bonacore. Thank you very much, Danny. You I did, appreciate it. You're, you you're right. So you agree with oh. me. You're saying you agree with me. So so here, here's the shtick right now. I'm gonna have a really hard time arguing against code names because it is in my top ten favorite games of all time. I, but I'm damn sure so gonna give it a run. I'm gonna give it a run. It is <laughs> I love every bit of code names. I play it every Thursday night with wonderful people and I've never had a bad time. I've never had a bad time playing. Like I can get anyone to the table to play it and I am completely on your side until I have to give my game it's it's justice, okay? So right now in this moment, you are right <laughs> until I'm gonna be right, all right? <laughs> but what about my so, game? My game was more right, right? <laughs> nope, not at all. So I, early on, early on in, you know, when I got into modern board games, I found code names like a lot of people and I found it to be enjoyable and I would play it with my friends a lot. But one of the things that kind of where I fell off the code names roller coaster or train or whatever, plane, <laughs> um, was that the whole concept of the two spy masters sitting there figuring out what clue they want to give everyone else is just like sitting around and it's like you kind of you know you could be socializing but you kind of like lose interest in the game because that can sometimes take forever and so so for me like code names kind of came off the shelf and you know eventually i had games like just one which i find to be um an amazing party game and uh, other other games but yeah for for some reason at some point i loved code names and then i think i just got tired of that waiting around and also like when i'm the spy master i feel guilty for making people wait around but i'm trying to 
analyze all these words. So I think it's a great design, um, but it, eventually it kind of felt a little flat for me in terms of party games. What you're mentioning is problems with your friends and the gamers you play with, <laughs> not the game. Does pan did pandemic Perhaps. create the alpha gamer problem, or is it just bad gamers that play pandemic? I'm sorry, that's not a problem with the game. Wow. <laughs> <gasps> wow, indeed. I think you just essentially called Candace's friends dumb. So <laughs> <laughs> if it fits. <gasps> Rude. Wow. Rude. The, shoe, the shoe does look like it fits it's, currently. I mean, I, I think it just struck a nerve because he knows it's true. You know, he knows it's <laughs> true about the game. So which I, I was expecting that reaction. So <laughs> I will say uh, Codenames is one of my favorite party games for sure. Um, I might like to crypto a little bit better, but I do always come back to Codenames. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> come on, Bonacore, to crypto. Let's go. Now, in terms of this designer, this is something Sorry. that I love Sorry. about uh, <laughs> about Vladis Uh He could create such a variety of games from heavy to not heavy party games to like hobby, hobby games, which is amazing. Um, would I say Codenames is his masterpiece? No, I don't think that this is his best game ever made. I think it's his best sold game uh, ever made possibly, but mm. in terms of the board game hobby, I, I wouldn't say it's like, this is a masterpiece of a board game. Um, and so, uh, no. Your your prosecutor <laughs> rests its case. <laughs> and and codenames duet like that was that that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, they, again, I think it's I think it's a solid game. It just kind of eventually um, fell a little flat for me. And there are like tons of other party games I would choose to play over it. Uh, but also, I would agree, Matthew. It's uh, it's a bestseller, but not the best. Blotic. Because people want to play. Because people want to play the code names. That's why it's the bestseller. Well, hey, no, well, Monopoly is a really great seller, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good point. We're going <laughs> to. Yeah. But obviously, you know, it is on, it is obviously, we, we, I even said it, right? It's, it's one of his lighter games, right? He's got these great big heavy games. This is one of his lighter games, but it is a masterpiece in that genre of just light, perfect. And when it came out, it was like, why didn't anybody else think of this? This is beautiful. Yeah. But anyway, I've made my point. Let's move on. Danielle, <laughs> I believe you have a game that you would like to present to us as well. Oh, it's my turn now. I, I did um, say that you right. would go third. I apparently blacked out you at that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, I may have confused that with the intros and I was going last. So let me get right into this. So let me tell you about the chaos that is Galaxy Trucker. Mm. Um, right off the bat, the point you need to hear is that we are building sewer systems in outer space. That's not the main goal of the game, but that is the end goal of the game. So sewer systems, outer space. We don't, you know, we can't really afford to like hire pilots to ship the goods, the needs to build sewer systems in outer space. So we're just gonna build the ship with all of those pieces. So we're gonna build a ship with pipes and all of the things needed to build the sewer system. And we're gonna hire truckers. Truckers to bring them out, and that's where we come in. So this game, the whole point of the game, it's a real-time tile placement game where there's there's no rounds, there's no turns. We are all just frantically picking up these tiles from a pile, deciding if we want them, and then putting them in our ship. And we are going to build our ship. We've got pipes, we've got batteries, we've got what do we got? Thrusters to move around. We got guns to shoot off meteors. We've got oh my god, my notes here. Uh, we got cabins to hold our astronauts um, and cargo holds because, you know, we got to carry the goods too. Um, so we got all these things, all these tiles. We're frantically pulling. We're putting them on the board to build our ships, but we can't just throw them out willy nilly. We need to make sure that there's a little bit of strategy to it. We need to make sure we have a good defense so we can make it to where we're going. We need to make sure we can house those astronauts. We need to make sure that we have no exposed pipes because if those get hit, 
it's not going to end well for anyone. So we are all at the same time building our ships until someone finishes their ship and then they flip a timer and then everyone else has to finish their ship in that amount of time. So it becomes very frantic. Actually, I think there's a couple of the rules in there where you can do some flippy flippy doo-doos with the, the hourglasses, but I'm not perfectly flippy, uh, flippy doo-doos. privy to that. <laughs> flippy I flippy doo-doos. That's the that. term that he uses, flippy flippy doo-doo. Yep. Hey, no, I, I'm just going I'm just going with the vibe of his rule books. I do believe, Juan, there's a quote in here I'd like to bring up. Uh, for the dollars that you get for completing uh, building your ship, they're called cosmic credits. And underneath it says, we wanted to call them Starbucks, but that was taken. So I feel like Flippy Flippy Doo Doo's <laughs> isn't, isn't too great. far off here. All right. That's great. So now that the, the frantic uh, chaos of building our ship is complete and we have all now looked at our masterpiece, we then have to go through a series of encounters. Um, throughout the time of building your ship, like you can look at a couple of them. You can't look at all of them. You can look and maybe have an idea of what's coming. Like, are we going to take on some big meteors? Am I going to be able to trade off some cargo to get some extra points? You know, get an idea, plan ahead. But here it comes. Flip a card one at a time, and we all have to deal with the encounter at hand. So if there's a big meteor coming in, some of them bigger than others might take out your ship if you have an exposed pipe. So you want shields. You know, you might be able to defend if you set up your blasters in the right spot, but really ultimately it's it's pure chaos. It's just, you really can't fully plan for anything that's going to happen. Then you need to decide, am I gonna sacrifice some of my crew, some of my astronauts to get some extra dollars because dollars is points, friends, get those Starbucks, who knows? So it's really up to you how you want to sail your ship through space. Um, at the end of the round, once we go through all the encounters, whoever has the most money wins. But how we get there, the journey to get to those space box is really is really the whole experience and all you need to know about it. Yeah, before before the like hate comes in, I just wanna jump on the bandwagon <laughs> here in terms of even though Danielle has not had my back this entire episode, um <laughs> I love this game. This was a super hot second for me, uh, because this I it is so much fun. It's not for everybody because of the chaos and your ship is getting blown up and people don't like that. They rage quit, whatever. Uh, it's not for you. That's okay. Um, but this one is just so much fun. I love it. I think it's hilarious watching my ship get blown up and all my master mm -hmm. plans just like crumbling apart in front of me. Um, yeah, I really can't say anything about it because I just freaking love it so much. Um, and so... Um, I just like Beige Knight a little bit better just because um, <laughs> it's a masterpiece. But um, <laughs> yeah, Galaxy Trucker was really like, I, I almost picked it to be honest. So I, yeah. Um, so I think you made a really good point with this. I think this is one of those games that you can't take it too seriously. Like, you know, your ship's going to get blown up. Like you can go into the tile picking and laying out your ship with all the strategy in the world. But at the end of the day, like you really don't know how it's going to go down. And I really like games that don't take themselves too seriously, that you can just have a good time and whoever wins, wins. Like you're not going to be salty at the end of it. It's just, it's just a matter of like what you're doing, who you're playing with and just having fun along the way. I feel like there's so many games where like you put a lot of mental power into making sure like you win and like you're 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 doing all the things you know you should be doing to execute the game. This is one of those games it's just purely to have fun. You want to have fun. If you win, great. If you don't, that's even better because you probably had a really fun time just <laughs> your ship along the way. Um and just like the the silly banter of like so as you're doing things and like going through the different encounters like you can sacrifice like your time on the um what was the the track that it's called there like you lose days to like do things it's just the silly banter back and forth the interaction with that and i just i think this game uh, see now i'm arguing for galaxy trucker because it's my game and i wanted to argue for code names and i'm at, <laughs> I'm at a crossroads like this might be better than just freaking it just speaks code the name sorry bonacore awesome. <laughs> he is yeah, a this, fantastic this designer. Is yeah. yeah. Candace, what do you think? I I've only played Galaxy Trucker once. I had a lot of fun with it and I thought it was like really interesting, especially like the simultaneous like I didn't it didn't like click for me that first game, but I went and bought it after that and never got to play it again and ended up selling it 
whatever, whatever. But I thought it was really cool. <laughs> it's something I would definitely like play again. And again, I think, you know, Vlada makes bangers. Like he does. That's, he does. that's the he bottom sure line. Does. He really what does. He really does. And yeah, I mean, this was my hot second without a doubt. Um, I've got the big box version here with the five expansions built into it and all that stuff. Um, it is, it, it's, it, it's genius. And this, and this is genius in, in the, again, in this, the simple fun way of you're going to have a crazy experience at the table. And this is one of those games also <laughs> that like play it with, as many players as you can find because everyone's going to be competing like like rant like just grabbing stuff from the center of the table to try to build your ship out which you know is going to get completely destroyed by the end of the game and you mm -hmm. if you're lucky your, your your ship doesn't completely get destroyed and you limp in sort of across the finish line to deliver your goods because things are hitting you space pirates are are are, are, are raiding you uh, um aliens are coming after you if you don't play this game to have fun if you try to be serious it doesn't make sense um the knock on the game of course and that's the and that and i you know and here's the, here is the negative of the game and you gotta be a little negative here right guys the negative <laughs> on this game is that if you're like a serious euro player like i play heavy euros and i'm very yeah. serious you know and i move my things around and don't mess with what i'm doing if that's the style of game you're gonna hate this game you are gonna yeah, you, play you are gonna materials materially hate this game because you're gonna build a bad ship to begin with or even you build the most perfect ship you build the perfect ship it's got the right number of guns that face in every direction it's got the right propulsion it gets you way out in front of everybody else you got the right life support system you got batteries all over the place you're gonna get destroyed that ship is going down because randomly Asteroids are going to hit you from this side, from that side. They hit four times from the same side to wipe out half your ship. And there's rules to like how roll. your ship can still be going after it's like been hit so many times. I think you need like at least one astronaut still alive or something like that yeah. to keep going. Um, so if you're the serious type only, not for you. And another great thing about this, and I, I can't give you all these good things, Danny, because now I'm going to like lose this, this See? argument. See, you're the, here with me at the crossroad. <laughs> it's a crossroad. Yes, I, was but the, I was totally with you. Yeah. The other, the other part that I love about this is that rule book. And we've talked, and I talked about it in the intro. Yes. That rule book literally set mm -hmm. to me a standard in rule book writing because it's so fun and lighthearted. Every section talks about one of the things you need for your ship. It'll be like, astronauts, you need a lot of these. Fate <laughs> lasers, you need a lot of these. Shields, you need a lot of these. He literally just does it so that like, you need everything, a lot of them, which you can't do. And that's the whole point of the game. You're gonna make the best ship possible yeah. and you're gonna fly out and it's gonna get completely messed up. So this is a good choice. But if you're an absolute heavy Euro gamer, you are gonna hate this game viscerally don't play it otherwise great choice <laughs> so Candace, i mean tell me yeah, so what do you like yeah so i i will say um vlada also designed space alert right he did and tosh oh, yeah. kalar like yes such a great designer and i love the, yeah. the variety of all of his games and everything but through the ages, a new story of civilization is without a doubt, like his best game. And I would say Mage Knight for me would be my second pick. Uh, but yeah, let's talk mm. about Through the Ages for a minute. Check Games Edition came out in 2015. I guess it, it was a real implementation. There was an original Through the Ages and then they did a new story of civilization where they streamlined a bit. But it is an awesome, awesome civilization building game for two to four players with this like satisfying and like challenging and competitive tense card drafting and engine building and you know in in through the ages each player is building their own civilization and you're playing through starting with the age of antiquity and then you play through the different ages and you get to the modern age and your goal is to have the most culture points at the end of the game meaning you have the best civilization that's how you're going to win the game. But the game is centered around this, this card row. Um, and the card row has different 
buildings, wonders, technologies, military units, governments, every single card has its own like unique art and everything. And you're kind of building up this tableau of your civilization. And, you know, on your turn, you get, you have a certain number of civil, civil actions, and then you have a certain number of military actions, uh, depending on your government, which you can upgrade throughout the game, which is cool. Um, but you're gonna, you could take cards from the card row, you could increase your population, you can build buildings, you can get leader cards and play leader cards, you can build wonders, develop, techno t develop technologies, play action cards, and, you know, ultimately you're trying to kind of improve your, your engine. You have like science production, which is going to help you build better buildings, uh, like techs and everything. And then you have culture production, which is going to generate victory points for you. But you also want to build up your military strength, especially in relation to other players. So there's like some real interesting player interaction with the whole military aspect of it. I love that it's such an innovative feeling civilization building game because there's no map, but it's just you're building this tableau and it feels like you are building a civilization. And, you know, I love the look and feel of the game where you have all these beautiful cards out and then you're, you have these yellow cubes that are representing workers that you're putting on your farms and in your military units and everything. And then you have these blue cubes that are resources. So depending on what they're on, it's generating like that type of resource. And again, like it's all driven by this really awesome card market row where you will want every card but like to get the cards that are further down the line you have to spend resources so then you're like oh well if i take this card then now it's going to make this that card cheaper for my opponents to get and it's just so so good like there are just so many interesting choices every single turn of the game um so you have a lot of different ways you can kind of strategize when you're playing. There's a really like nice escalation as you play through each age and better cards come out and you're trying to like improve your engine. I find it to be very challenging. I play with people who are very good at it and I love trying to constantly get better at it. Um, but it has like this great, like great player interaction. Uh, again, I like, I love the look and feel of it and not only do I think it is like one of the best civilization building board games out there, but to me, it's just one of the best board games out there. Like it's such a special, like unique game. And yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's brilliant. Have you, any of you played it? So I'm noticing two factions here on the show today, like the heavy <laughs> faction <laughs> and the lighter <laughs> faction. So let's go first, maybe with Matthew's opinion on this game. So I have played this game. I've only ever played it digitally, though. Um, and after playing it digitally, I I was like, I don't think I could play this physically because of all of the moving parts of like, OK, these blue cubes have to go in certain places. I'm like, you know what? Thank you, computer, for doing <laughs> that for me, <laughs> um, because I don't know what's going on. Uh, this game is super challenging. I, I only have gone up against the uh, introductory AI in this game, and I have lost every single time. And I'm not talking <laughs> about second or third place. I'm saying last place every <laughs> single time. Um, and I'm like, I do not understand what I'm supposed to be doing in this game. Um, as far as, uh, you know, um, being the best game and the best Civ building game, I don't know. I like maps. I like having those maps there for Civ building and the exploration and all that. Um, and that this game doesn't have it is interesting, but I feel like I'm missing it. Uh, I, I wish I had it. Uh, I, I do like the card drafting mechanism where like, oh, if I take this, I'm making these things cheaper for other players. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. I, I don't feel like, okay, I've now built a civilization at the end of the game. I just feel like, man, I got pummeled and I don't know why. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and all these cards and things. Um, I like the uh, interesting mechanism of the happiness 
tracker. Um, although that grinds my gears. I, I find it fiddly in a way. I, I feel like if I was to play this physically, uh, and, and especially because you had mentioned this about Mage Knight, like to like put this out onto the table and like, you know, read through whatever. I feel like this would suffer from the same problem. I have not played it physically, but it I, I would imagine it would suffer from the same problem. Um, so yeah, I don't, this is not one of my favorites of um, this designer, but uh, I I respect what it tried to do, and I like the idea of it. But <laughs> I I I don't know. I honestly think you don't understand it. Like I don't mean that in a, like a mean way, but I did not. No, you do. Like, the first oh, time I do. played it. No, I, the first time I played it, it went over my head. I played with two people who knew what they were doing and we were trying to play it kind of quickly. So I had a bad introduction to it. Um, but once you understand how things work, it's actually, oh, it's just such a beautiful system. But I think it's, you know, and the fact that you're saying you were like losing to the bot and also learning from the app. I think, um, I think the app is amazing. And yeah, I would probably say like, at least like it, it's, it's one of the best apps, uh, like app implementations for a board game, period. Um, I still do like playing the physical game because I like more of a tactile experience of yeah, moving pieces around. I love the, I love just those translucent cubes are just, I don't know. I love, I love playing with them and you know putting cards and seeing seeing my tableau in front of me but i think the app is amazing but i think if you don't like understand the game and i don't mean like you didn't like know to do there's just like there there's a learning curve for like kind of mastering it and it took me a little bit to get to a point where i'm playing at the you know level that i am which is no, nowhere near mastery compared to other people but like once i kind of got it i was just like oh like i see why people love this game i see why it's you know a lot of people i know's favorite civilization game you know and i think there's a if you don't understand the like how it all comes together well you're you might you know it might fall flat for you but I okay, can't. You're gonna you're gonna have to teach me the game and uh, you know make me smarter. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, why it. don't you do why don't you go before I put the hammer down here? All right, all right. So I think this is one of those games that <laughs> I would never play outside of my gaming group. I would I would not want to sit down with strangers and try and play a game with them all of the reasons you've already said candace like this is something where i want to play with people i know their strategies i'm just gonna do mine you do yours and then that's it i also games like these i really enjoy i like i said for mage night i love the big chonkers i love a dry euro the drier the boring the better give me the most boring dry <laughs> theme on the planet but i also really love games that incite like laughter enjoy the table and that's why galaxy trucker it kind of checks all of the boxes like it gets a lot of people it gets a little people to the table it gets you interacting it just there is so much just happiness not seeing through the ages isn't going to bring anyone happiness because like i said the drier the better it brings me happiness <laughs> but it isn't it isn't a popular one. It's not going to be one that people are going to come over for a bigger game and be like, let's play that one. And if they do, I'm going to say no, because I'm never going to want to play this with more than two or three people ever. Um, so it's a situational thumbs up for me. Um, and I sure, feel like sure. a lot of the bigger, the bigger games get the situational thumbs up. It's for me. It's not for everyone. Exactly. And I think every single game that we're talking about here is for someone and definitely not for everyone. Yep. Yes. Uh, but I, I think, you know, what Vlada has created with this game is very special and very unique. And it is chef's kiss, like just, just, it's a, it's a, an amazing board game. And yes, it's not going to be for everyone, but like, there are going to be people who are watching this video and they are going to be like, yes, through the ages and no code names, no galaxy trucker. They'll probably yeah. be like, yes, mage Knight also. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> all right. All right. What, what would you like to say, Mr. Bonacore? Team heavy over there. Okay. So I'm going to tell you about this game. 
it's really freaking good. Okay, I'm sorry. It really is good. <laughs> um, a Civ building game based you know, basically just with cards is was a great idea when it came out. And you know, another thing that is a testimonial to this game is that there's two versions of it, right? The original and the new story, and they're both in the right. top hundred, right? So that's a thing when mm -hmm. when you do it, you do a version, and another one comes out, and they're both so highly regarded. I've never played the new story. I played the original story, and it's oh. it. It's solid. It, it certainly is a solid game. I'm not going to put it in my top even All right, 100 and games. And that's a wrap. No, and that's not a wrap. Because <laughs> I, like Matthew mentioned, also, you know, if I'm going to do a Civ building game, I'm going to put some dudes on a map and I'm going to roll my tanks through Europe or I'm going to just, you know, run across the world and do this kind of stuff with, with my civilization. That's more of the, the style of a Civ building that I like. But credit where credit is due. Vlada did an amazing job with putting this system together. It absolutely doubly stands the test of time. And, you know, I'd have to relearn it because it's, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff in there. And yeah, and I, I Matthew, I'm, I'm sure that any AI will crush most players unless like Candace probably, who's really serious about it and really gets it. Um, no, I but get I would play it. this game. I would play this game um, with you um, if, if we had the opportunity and to relearn it and to even play the new version. Um, not not a go-to thing for me, but it absolutely is solid. Not nearly as good as Codenames or Galaxy Trucker, I guess. Okay. <laughs> for you. Or me, <laughs> like the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think you got to kind of think of it too. Like, you know, you both commented like, oh, I'm missing the map. But if you kind of just separate the fact that it's a civilization building game and just think of it as this is a board game where you're doing all this competitive awesome engine building tableau building it's no. amazing so we'll just end the show there yeah. no. the i need People's my theme choice. need that theme <laughs> so we tackled a very difficult topic today the games of vlada schwatel and we've got to all agree that he has got a lot of great games. I hope you out there who are watching us all agree that the choices made by the co-hosts were excellent. Some were better than others. And really represent the wide <laughs> variety of games that Vlada has done. What do you think? Tell us in the comments for the show. Agree, disagree, say Bonacore is a really big mean jerk. Let us know what you think. <laughs> and in case you've forgotten, I'm Stephen Bonacore, the podfather of gaming. And I'm Candace Harris from BGG. I'm Matthew McCack from Room 51. I'm Danny Standring from the internet. <laughs> and we hope to see you next time here on The Quad. That's my case. It's just chaos. Galaxy Tracker what is, is just this chaos game and all of it. Oh, yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> did I not say that? I don't you think did. you did. You did. I was listening. Oh, I thought I said too. <laughs> well, apparently I wasn't. So I'm glad you were. <laughs>